main volcano quake swarms and other locations that we're going to see the heli plots for and we'll analyze them and does this have anything to do with the northeast supervolcano why are these tremors taking place and uh, most of us didn't know but Maine had the biggest and baddest volcano of all and we're going to take a look at this as well because we should know because this is one of the most populated areas of the United States. Now most of us uh, that have seen the beautiful mountains and forests of the northeast, the eastern seaboard, are just uh, overtaken by the beauty of all of this. But we never realize what lies underneath all this greenery and water and wonderful trees. And uh, it's one of the baddest volcanoes there. So let's take a look at what's going on. Well, the first thing I want to do is go to the USGS monitoring operations, the heli plots, because uh, this Oklahoma, because just to have a quick look at what's going on. And uh, okay, we had earthquake, Antigua, Barbuda, Barbados is rocking as well, as we know uh, they're. Um, Volcanic. There's a volcano in the Caribbean as well, and undersea volcanoes in the Gulf of Mexico. Panama, Grenada, as we can see. Cuba has uh, got a few tremors, but it's pretty calm. And let's go to China. Yes, China, Beijing, China, had in China, Hubei province in China. Let's go, do I have my, yes, I have it here. Here we have, uh, I'll show you where Hubei, China is. We had one here as well, an earthquake. And we had an earthquake in Taiwan, and that's on the Ring of Fire, as we know. And Hubei is right around there. Um, right around the folds. Uh, it's right around here from when I saw it. Um, okay, so it's uh, basically where all these folds are. And here, oh yeah, here it is, Hubei, there it is, Hubei, I'm sorry, but the letters in my map are Greek, that's Hubei, that's where it was, where all these geological folds are, you can see them here, where the uh, African plate and the Indian plate are pushing into this area here, and these are the Himalayas, we've had uh, earthquakes at the Himalayas as well, and they're expecting a big one there, so, China, yes, that's rocking too. Let's go back. China, as you can see, China, China, okay, China, Tibet, China, Henan, okay, they, they've seen, they've got earthquakes. Now, let's go, Alaska, of course, has its volcanoes. Turkey has the Anatolia Fault, which is a uh, super, sh super sheer, uh, terrible fault. If it gives, it gives very big earthquakes, anywhere from 7.5 to 9.0. And uh, it has sonic booms as well. So you can see that it's got a tremor there. That's really bad. This has been going on for days. Um, let's go back here. Antarctica, of course, has been going on like this for days. Russia has, has, got, has got its volcanoes. Uh, on the east, and we're heading into Thailand as we saw. Okay, Oregon, the Philippines had a volcano, yes, Ring of Fire, and let's go to Germany has a volcano as we know. As someone from Germany says it's a super volcano, I have to do a video on that. Uh, and there's a huge lake in the crater, and people go there for the summer for boating and swimming and everything, picnicking. And they're in the crater. They don't know that the magma is swelling underneath and that's and deforming, and uh, that's not good news. So Texas, something very strange goes on in Texas every day. We see this type of a signature. This is uh, today's February 20th plots. Okay, so let's go back to Texas. Russia, we passed Missouri, Alaska, 
the Philippines, Germany and Texas and Korea and we have Afghanistan. You see all these places are basically Hawaii of course is totally rocking uh, with the volcanoes and Canary Islands okay you have the El Hierro thing there all of those islands are volcanic islands so you can expect that they're rocking too and Kazakhstan okay Midway Island that's uh, in the Pacific Australia Spain Russia okay and then we have Antarctica and Hawaii of course we see there the South Pacific and you can see here we're heading into Antarctica again always every single day you have signatures like that and of course we know that Antarctica has at least a hundred volcanoes and some of them are yes active underneath the ice and the glaciers and then they're wondering why the glaciers are melting it's because all these volcanoes give heat off um, New Zealand and Pennsylvania has had a couple of rumbles Taiwan as we said yes Greenland where are we I passed it did I pass it New Zealand Taiwan yes now Mongolia of course and Wake Island and Russia of course with the uh, volcanoes there and then Binghamton New York wow this has been going on for a few days uh, this has been going on Binghamton New York it's not far from uh, New England where the super volcano is and Montana of course has a few rumblings then we're going to this is Utah South Dakota Pennsylvania Washington Idaho Colorado is swinging a little bit as you can see and they don't have Yellowstone here or California let's go it's a pretty quiet now Texas is always like this every day what is going on there this is a mess what is going on there anyway let's go Nebraska Nebraska was that Texas yes Nebraska Maine Maine was not this bad yesterday is Montana swinging yeah they had earthquake swarms yesterday in Montana you can see that in my Yellowstone video from yesterday they had an earthquake swarm just north uh, west of Yellowstone in Montana and it's still swinging today look at this mess look at this mess and uh, I think we're gonna go to Oklahoma and I think Texas we saw Texas already okay Maine it's a state park they have a lot of national parks there Maine and uh, latest earthquakes in Maine they have nothing listed here that's not surprising uh, the Philippines though do have some lists we saw that the Philippines had earthquakes today and uh, these circles are the sizes of them okay this is February 14th they had a pretty big one five and you had uh, uh, again there, this one is today this looks to be between a three and a four magnitude that's today's so they have the lists here they don't have it for Maine um, that's all right what can we do this is volcanoes in China let's go to the um, Maine volcano okay these are the Pixabay volcano pictures of Maine you can see they're very nicely rounded and uh, most of them are in parklands 
they look very nice uh, nice and qu quiet and peaceful um, there we go again there's the one I have in my video and uh, of course when you see things like this Acadia National Park that's the one I have in my video was Acadia National Park as well and uh, and there's uh, and you see things like this and you and you just overtaken by the beauty you don't realize the the geology involved in this so yeah I'm going to read it. Let's go through this. Maine's volcanoes. Yes, Maine, among the world's biggest and baddest volcanoes. Uh, this was uh, this is an old article, but that's okay. I'll, I'll go into newer ones later. Maine has super volcanoes. Wait, Maine has volcanoes? Yes, and their eruptions could have been among the largest, biggest ever on Earth. One of the videos just before this one had to do with a recent uh, scientific geological finding that they were having to do with the volcanic dikes and they found that uh, volcanic magma from dikes that has been found in Mexico and North America, the same magma has been found in Europe from the same volcanic eruption. So whatever was in North America reached Europe as well as Mexico. And this was like something like, uh, if I remember correctly, something like 680 million years ago. So you could imagine the, the terrible destruction that took place having this uh, magma, this lava, uh, stretching from North America to Europe all the way down to Mexico. So, yes, and their eruptions, they say, could have been the biggest ever on Earth. Geoscientist Sheila Seaman reported here at the Geological Society of America's annual meeting. Long before there were these things called supervolcanoes, we've known about giant, big, horrific, silicic volcano, volcanic eruptions, said Seaman of the University of Massachusetts' Amherst. The most massive of these blasts in recent history was Toba, which blew up an island in Indonesia two and a half million years ago. The explosion heaved 700 cubic miles of magma out of the Earth's crust. Okay, so that was two and a half million years ago. Around 420 million years ago, a series of super eruptions dropped thick piles of ash and lava fragments along the proto-east coast. Oh, she's talking about, of course, North America. And uh, there are at least four volcanoes spread out along 100 miles of Maine's coast. So there's at least four volcanoes on Maine's coast at least, uh, alone, let alone. <laughs> okay, you've got other, you've got other, uh, let's go back here. Let's go back, let's go, let's go to the East Coast. Let's go to our beloved East Coast. Where are you? Come here, please. Come and see here, as they say in German. Okay. There we go. Our little Maine. There you go. There's Maine. Maine, 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 Maine. And, as you can say, let's measure this in miles. That's about 206 miles across. And then you go into... New Hampshire is another 150 miles and as you could say I mean okay you cross into various that's New Jersey New York okay Connecticut so you can see all these things are pretty close together and uh, she's got at least Maine has at least five volcanoes amazing amazing now I I can imagine, what are these little things here, on, on in a line? I would bet they are little volcanoes as well, volcano cones. And they're heading under here. Okay, Bermuda. And uh, all this is, of course, underwater. We have underwater water volcanoes here as well. So, 
Okay, in the Proto East Coast, which is this, or I guess here, I don't know, or maybe this was the Proto East Coast. I don't know, what is that circle there? Hmm, interesting stuff. What is that? There's also little combs around it. But anyway, let's not get carried away on a tangent. Let's just have that here. And going back. So, on the Proto East Coast, 420 million years ago, a series of super eruptions dropped thick piles of ash and lava along the Proto East Coast. There are at least four volcanoes spread out along 100 miles. As we said, miles, it means coast was what was it? 200 miles across? So half of them are, half of the coast is volcanoes. The huge volcanic rock piles are consistent with caldera forming eruptions, Seema said. These explosions empty a magma chamber, leaving a gaping wound in the earth, of course. Think Yellowstone National Park or the San Juan Volcanic Field in Colorado. Uh, or maybe even long, the Long Valley Caldera or the uh, lavic fields in uh, where the Pisgah Crater is that's been rocking for the past few days. Since they formed, the ancient volcanic layers have been tilted up by tectonic forces, providing a top-to-bottom slice through a supervolcano. For example, Il Ohot, part of uh, Acadia National Park, which is of course in Maine, exposes the heart of a volcano. Wow! The whole magma chamber is lying on its side, Seaman said. Can you imagine what happened there? Building on years of geologic mapping and tectonic reconstructions by other researchers, Seaman has traced a direct connection between the cooled and crystallized magma chambers called plutons and their enormous ash deposits. Volcanic rocks on Maine's Cranberry Island have a 2,300 foot thick, that's 700 meters thick, layer of welded tuff, a rock formed from volcanic ash. The welded tuff from Toba's most recent blowout is 200 feet, that's 600 meters. So they're just about the same uh, size and thickness, Seaman said. On the remote Il Ohot, part of Acadia National Park, the volcanic rocks are more than three miles thick. Can you imagine? Three miles thick? That's over ten times what it was from Toba. Now, Seaman said, they're capped by an immense ash flow, more than 3,200 feet thick. Seaman estimates, estimates that the caldera at Mount Desert Island would have been about 15 miles long, and 15 miles wide, for comparison to Topaz Caldera, which is 62 miles long and 18 miles wide. Quote, the coast is so serene and so beautiful and has such a terrible violent past, Seaman told Live Science. Seaman thinks the supervolcanoes struck between 424 million to 419 million years ago. In the Silurian period, after islands the size of Japan slammed into the eastern edge of Laurentania. Laurentania, Laurentania is, of course, I guess, the, where we have uh, the St. Lawrence River, you know, the, the northeast coast, the continental core, uh, core of North America. Afterwards, tectonic forces stretched and tore Earth's crust behind the collision zone, making space for magma to rise from the mantle, the layer beneath the crust. Now, she plans to further work to better understand the conditions that caused the super eruptions, such as mixing of different kinds of magma. So, yeah. Uh, so then, is there a super volcano in New England? Now, this here is the volcano of Vermont. Look at it, it looks so serene and beautiful. You'd go swimming, you'd go boating in there, you'd go fishing around there, and uh, camping around those areas, and you're saying, my God, these are all volcanoes. Now let's go to an article uh, having to do. IFL Science says, no, there isn't a supervolcano appearing in New England. 
here's what really happened. Now, if we look at the map, of course, we know we saw the map of Maine and New Hampshire, Vermont. Maine is just uh, northeast of Vermont. And uh, Maine, as we know, had, as we measured, let me measure it again on my Google. It's about, okay, it's about 200 miles across. And then going across, uh, dissecting Vermont, it's another 120 miles. 130 miles just uh, southeast of uh, Maine is Vermont. So what really happened here? Because they're neighbors. I mean, basically, there's the same, the same land. It turns out that there's a brand new supervolcano appearing under New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Maine. At least that's what the headlines are saying all of a sudden. But it turns out that, surprise, surprise, this is not true. And this is based off a study that was published late last year, one that explicitly said that we should not expect a new Yellowstone-esque caldera, a large crater left by a volcanic explosion anytime soon, or even in the future. Here's what actually happened. A heat glow beneath those three states first discovered back in the 1970s, so that was not so long ago, right? A heat glow beneath those three states was long thought to be the afterglow of a dead, once upwelling plume of mantle material termed the great meteor, quote unquote, using fresh seismic waves to determine what material resided down below. A paper dated 2016 concluded that there is an active, there is an active independent upwelling of very hot rock taking place right now. Let me read that for you. The 2016 paper concluded that there is an active independent upwelling of very hot rock, they're talking about a mantle plume of course, taking place right now. Okay, so you heard that. Although the so-called North Appalachian Anomaly, NAA, was already known about, its high temperature and independence from the great meteor came as a surprise. The author suspected then that one day, millions of years from now, there would be baby volcanoes of some sort cropping up in the northeastern United States. Okay, so they're expecting baby volcanoes cropping up in the northeast. In late 2017, Rutgers University whose researchers co-authored that 2016 paper, used two years' worth of data from EarthScope, that's a massive array of seismic instruments, to better constrain what was beneath New England. They zeroed in on those elevated temperatures in the upper mantle, and their data suggested a ballooning-like shape, characteristic of the top of a mantle plume. All right. Let's read that again. Their array of seismic instruments to better constrain what was beneath New England, they zeroed in on those elevated temperatures, on those high temperatures in the upper mantle of the Earth. Their data suggested a ballooning-like shape is what is usually taking place on the top of a mantle plume. So the uh, northeastern United States is sitting on top of a mantle plume ballooning and they're expecting little baby volcanoes to be cropping up in the northeastern United States. Think of Kilauea. M multiply that by baby volcanoes ar along the northeast. It's narrow, slow moving and based on the lack of surface activity, volcanism or deformation is likely to be geologically young Eventually, this could lead to an eruption at the surface in perhaps 50 million years, but it's a small plume compared to others, so we should not expect anything super volcanic. Don't expect anything super volcanic, just volcanic. <laughs> <laughs> just volcanic. In fact, it may be so small that it will never manage to make volcanoes to the surface. So, what's with the super volcano shenanigans then? It's clearly broken. Volcanist, volcanologist brains on social media. So uh, that's the explanation of it. Uh, 
I'll leave a link below on IFL Science and I'll leave the link below for you for the USGS heli plots for you to uh, look at once in a while if you'd like. So there's no super volcano, there's a ballooning mantle plume. They're expecting to have little baby volcanoes all along the northeastern uh, eastern coast. So it's not one volcano, but it's a whole mantle plume. It used to be a really bad volcano that took place, you know, millions of hundreds of millions of years ago, <laughs> and it's there. But uh, the Northeast is so beautiful, all these beautiful mountains that people go to for vacationing and everything, and for skiing, resorts, they're all volcanoes. So, thank you, and uh, we'll have updates on this as well, just like we do on Yellowstone. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.